It is now my great pleasure to introduce today's commencement speaker, Mr. Jazz Lewis. Mr. Lewis currently represents Maryland's 24th legislative district in the state's House of Delegates, where he serves on the House Judiciary Committee. He also serves as the vice chair of the Maryland House Democratic Caucus, as well as executive director of Congressman Steny Hoyer's Maryland political organization. A scant five years ago, Delegate Lewis sat where all of you now sit. He too wondered, what comes next? Boy, did he answer that question. As Dean, I not only respect Delegate Lewis, I deeply appreciate him. He has always answered the call when his school needs him. He has also served as a very effective mentor to many of our students and graduates. Even standing in line today, he was brainstorming with me about what more we could do to help our students plug in to the service opportunities in this county and in this state. Finally, I can confirm that Delegate Lewis's first name is spelled J-A-Z-Z. But don't you dare think of him as smooth jazz. He is one part Coltrane and one part Ellington. Delegate Lewis, the floor is yours. Well, well, uh, with that introduction, right? Um, well, first things first, uh, I'm a public servant, so sorry to disappoint, I won't be paying for anyone's student loans. We can set the expectations low. <laughs> Sorry, wish I could though. Um, thank you, Dean Orr, uh, for that kind introduction and for this honor to welcome the class of 2019. Congratulations to you all. And thank you to the spouses, the partners, the children, parents, grandparents, siblings, and friends who are here and helped our graduates reach this day. Uh, thank you to the faculty, staff, and administration uh, for serving as mentors, advisors, and counselors. Uh, to prepare the class for what comes next. Five short years ago, I sat where you sit now, and during my commencement, I had the great fortune of being uh, heard by Majority Leader Congressman Steny Hoyer, uh, who addressed our class, which was a particularly special honor for me because a week before commencement, he offered me a job. Uh, and he gave me a shout out during commencement, which was a plus. Um, but he made a couple points that was very memorable for me for obvious reasons I remembered them. During Mr. Hoyer's remarks, he spoke about how when he graduated law school in 1966, the minimum wage at the time was $1.25 an hour, and how that, though now the national minimum wage is $7.25 an hour, in 1966 dollars, it would be equivalent to 99 cents an hour. A clear indication that wages is not kept up with cost over time. He spoke about how there were too few women and absolutely no minorities in his law class when he graduated, and that though the moral arc of the universe is long, it does indeed bend towards justice. His overarching message was that uh, though the school had prepared you uh, to lead, it was up to you to be, to live out the good, do good challenge and be thoughtful actors in the world. My message is gonna be just a little bit different my message in honor to anyone who's ever studied President Theodore Roosevelt is for you all to get action. President Roosevelt was consumed with getting things done and I believe in today's time, we need to channel our inner Teddy, so to speak. As an undergraduate here on campus, I came here at a time and uh, Professor Littlefield and, and Professor Crocker who also taught me during undergrad can attest to this. Uh, I was here when the recession had just hit and I was part of a group of students that marched in the main administration building with other concerned students uh, because of proposed tuition hikes and because uh, we feared that non-tenured faculty would be laid off. As I'm sure many of you are aware, non-tenured faculty are more likely to be persons of color or women and can make all the difference in the world to students who are people of color or women and feeling welcome on this campus. We didn't ask for permission, we just took it. And as a result of a thousand students showing up and demanding action, 
the president's office was forced into negotiating with us. Through all a continuation of direct action, um, majority of the faculty was able to stay and tuition was frozen so that none of us would price out of our education. As a young legislator of color, I was proud to be elected as part of a wave of new voices that burst through the glass ceiling to create the most diverse legislature in the state of Maryland's history, which I was pretty happy about. Currently in our Democratic caucus, there's 99 of us, which is the first time it's been this many in about 10 years, but of the 99 within the Democratic caucus, 53 are folks of color, be that African American, Asian Pacific Islander, Latino, um, of any race, and 51 of the 99 are women. Uh, so tap out to, taps off to the ladies. Yeah. That's all. None of us asked for permission to run. We saw a need and answered the call to get things done. And now I work with my colleagues, labor unions, racial equity advocates to draft and push legislation that ends cycles of poverty through increased wages, new supports for small businesses, and criminal justice reform. The need for action is extreme and urgent. Climate change is rapidly escalating out of control possibly damning your future and the future of your children. Even though the U.S. only makes up 5% of the world population, we have 25% of the world's prison population, which means that one out of every three black boys who may or may not be in this room can expect to go to prison in his or her lifetime, as can one of every six Latino boys, as compared to one out of every 17 Latino males. And just so you know, the fastest growing prison population right now are women of color. When Mr. Hoyer graduated in 1966, our gross federal debt was $328 billion, which in today's dollars would be about $2.6 trillion. In effect though, today we're at over 22 trillion. While national high school graduation rates have continued to rise, readiness for life has fallen behind. As reported by the ACT, only 38% of high school graduates last year were college or career ready. In 1966, there were two superpowers in the USSR and the United States. And now in 2019, there is one primary superpower with many non-state actors and regional powers vying for positions and resources. The world you are entering as newly minted graduates is complicated. But so long as you are committed to stepping up to the plate and seizing your moment in history, you'll be prepared for it. The challenges of today require those who engage in policymaking not only to be good leaders, but good listeners, not merely to care about issues, but also to address them carefully and acknowledge their complexities. As I look out at each and every one of you and think about the promise of our generation, I see much cause for hope that reason and principle will continue to serve as your guide, be it working at the local, state, national, international, or non-governmental level. The growing diversity among our policymakers in both backgrounds and beliefs makes America stronger as we face the challenges ahead of us. We must push back against those who would use diversity and create to, to, use, uh, to create division or to distract us from what ails us all, which is the suffering human condition. In Annapolis, I don't care if my colleagues are conservative, libertarian, or democratic socialists. I work with those committed to making sure mothers get a helping hand citizens returning from incarceration get a second shot, and that we create new pathways to support businesses that not only help our economy, but also help our society. Our generation, the most interconnected in human history, has the advantage of seeing more of the world up close than any generation before it. But as our world shrinks, our responsibility to do good in it grows. Even now, as was the case in the last century and for centuries before that, the awareness of injustice or suffering too often does not lead to action. In the 21st century, however, one cannot plead ignorance of justice or pain on the other side of the room or the other side of the world. The moment that something happens, your phone or watch vibrates, notifying you of the latest tweet, post, or action anywhere in the globe. So I implore you, in each of your own lives and careers, to commit to getting action by lending your time, your energy, and your effort to the challenges of the day. So in the words of President Roosevelt, get action, do things, be sane, don't fritter away your time, create, act, 
Take place wherever you are and be somebody. Congratulations and Godspeed.